Tonight, she stars in Cinderella as Cinderella. Please welcome the dazzling Camila Cabello. Camila Cabello coming on to the stage for the first and third time. Give it up, Camila Cabello. How are you? How nice to see you. How, How are you doing? Nice to see you. I've seen a lot of you. These, seen a lot of these you these past last few days, days for yeah. sure. Well, it's nice having you back in LA because I know throughout yeah. COVID it felt like you were in Miami the whole time. I was, and I'm about to be back in Miami the whole time because I love Miami. Yeah. <laughs> you spent a lot of time yes. with your with your boyfriend, Sean Mendez. And our COVID puppy. Yes, and your COVID puppy. Did you get the puppy during COVID? Sure did. How many of you guys got had got like a little COVID puppy? Yeah. Lawrence did. I think Dave did. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you told me that you learned about Sean that he um, oh my God. started sleep talking. Yes. Well, he's always sleep talked. Right. But it happened a lot during the pandemic because we were going to sleep together every night mm. that I stay up a little bit longer than he does. I'll be like on my iPad or reading or whatever. And he just like is one of those people that as soon as he gets into bed is just like five minutes later, like mid sentence. He'll be like, oh. and I, and I'll be like, um, but I would be like reading or something and he would just like start sleep talking and it would scare the <laughs> out of me because he'd just be like, baby, that feels so good. And then he would like go back to sleep. That is the first thing he ever said when he slept talking, by the way. I don't know. I was he like, said, baby, thank you? that feels so yeah. good. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, thank you. I'm not really doing anything right now. I think. Um, but he would just say random things like that. And can you imagine like somebody like, opening their eyes, looking at you, but you know that like, they're asleep. Yes. Like, can you imagine the terror of that? Like, I'd just be reading and I'd be like, oh, Like, I would just no. be so scared. I've it done it terrifying. Once. I've done it once with my wife where I did that, open my eyes, and no. this is, uh, yeah, uh, this is only particular to the fact that West Ham United Football Club, yeah. very topical for America, West Ham I know, United like, Football what? Club used to be managed by a manager called Slaven Bilic. And this is about three years ago. One night, just during the night, I just went like this. Someone has to tell Slaven Bilic. No way. <laughs> no way. And I'm about to sleep. Oh my God. True story. And I don't know. And I don't know what they had to tell them. I have no idea you, what I was dreaming but, about. So your wife told you the next morning that you yeah. said that, and you had no recollection. I couldn't of it. tell you yeah. what needed to be done at the club, but <laughs> someone needed to tell Slavan Village. That's that's yeah. That's, now, that's what Sean does. We uh, one thing that you and I have in common is our love of boy bands. Yes. We both love a good boy band. Love a what, good I boy didn't band. actually know this about you. What are some of your favourites? How deep does this love go? Um. Well, I was obsessed with One Direction uh, when I was younger. Yep. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, every time I walk by here and I see... <laughs> I love that Lawrence led the clap on that. Lawrence just went, woo! <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I used to be obsessed with One Direction, um, and I, I had, like... I mean, people will be like, is it true you used to have a fan account for One Direction? I had, like, a Twitter account that had, like, this is super embarrassing, but it had, like, Harry's, I know you're friends with him, so I don't know if this is super embarrassing, but um, I had his name in it, I had his picture as my icon. I had, like, three followers, so it wasn't like I ran a fan account for One Direction, but I was obsessed with them, and um, I remember they had this concert in Miami, and during the countdown, I peed my pants of excitement. Are you serious? Like, straight up, peed my pants. So, what, the screen was going, like, 10, nine, nine, and I'm like, ah! Eight. And I'm like, oh, my God, I just myself. <laughs> So that's how much I love boy bands. Have you ever peed yourself? Have with, I ever peed with Harry myself? Right here on the desk? I've never peed myself <laughs> at a concert, but I did once pee myself when I was having a dream about Slavan Bilic. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you, th you dreamt that you were having a warm yeah, shower. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. happened to me too. Now, I want to talk to you about this because you recently posted uh, a, a, a video in response to uh, something, and it went viral on. TikTok, in, in response to, uh, I can only describe a sort of a body shaming yeah. photo of you yeah. that was published. Uh, talk me through what happened and what the feedback has been since you posted this video and why you thought it was important to do such a thing. Right. Well, backstory. So I was running in the park um, and just West Hollywood, which is actually one of the reasons that I honestly don't love being in LA that much and I love Miami, is that there's paparazzi 
everywhere. And so I'm like running in West Hollywood and you don't even see them. Like you just the next day there will be pictures of me and I'll be like, I didn't even see a camera or a guy there. This is so weird. So I'm running and I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I gained a little COVID-15. I gained some COVID weight. Um, but I am exercising, so I do, I do look right mm. <laughs> But, um, so I went running and I had, you know, my belly out and I, I didn't know anybody was taking pictures of me. And then I was like, the first thing I thought of, because it had happened to me a few times before, like while I've been in LA, I was like, oh, these pictures are gonna come out. And you know, my, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt that like shows my tummy and I wasn't tucking in. And I had all the initial kind of like anxiety thoughts of like, damn, I didn't see him there. I didn't know he was there and these pictures are gonna be out. And then I was like, you know what? This is normal. Like, it's like my weight is gonna go up and down. Also, we have this crazy, these crazy beauty standards from like, freaking Instagram of people that, you know, are photoshopped or if they're not photoshopped, it's not every woman's body. Um, and I was just like, you know what, let me get on TikTok and just talk about this. And I talk about in the video, like we're real women and we have curves and we have cellulite and we have fat. And it's just like a lot to just like have these crazy unrealistic standards that make us feel bad about ourselves and make us feel like in order to go out, I have to hide my body or put on a big t-shirt. It's like, why should I have to do that? Why can't I just like be me? And I posted it and it was like literally the next day, I got so many women coming up to me being like, whoa, like that's so resonated with me. Um, and these standards are ridiculous and so toxic. And Anytime pictures, I just feel so much more confident now, honestly, after I posted that video, because I feel like I just kind of controlled the narrative on it. Yeah. You know, instead of people feeling well, I like... I also think the news and media organisations have a, have a duty to not start running things in magazines of like, oh, look at her belly, where actually... Totally. Actually, if those news organisations chose not to lean into the negative, but lent into the positive and were like... Totally. Look at Camila Cabello going out for a run, yeah, totally. living her best life, totally. that would be a much more positive thing to put out there. I'm so glad that you did it. I'm so Thank glad you. you said it. I'm glad <laughs> that the response has been what it's been. Um, because this is... I honestly think this is an amazing time for you. I'm lucky enough. I've seen Cinderella. I've seen the movie. And I I've told you this personally. I'll tell you this uh, openly now. You are so... Brilliant in this Thank film. You. you, you, considering it's your acting debut, it is absolutely incredible. It's a, a modern take on a classic tale. For anyone who doesn't know, why is this Cinderella different, and why should people watch it on Amazon? Well, I think it's you know, I think that fairy tales are these kind of ve vehicles, especially for young people, of messages and um, and uh, and lessons. And I feel like this movie is just this kind of modern retelling of it, where the princess, you know, she's not waiting for some prince or anybody for that matter to save her. She is, as Billy Porter has said, the CEO of her own destiny, uh, which I love. And she's, you know, she's got dreams and she's got ambitions. And it's at a time where women aren't allowed to own shops and pursue their kind of creative vision. And she's seeing um, this kind of like societal uh, system that's holding her back and she's the one that's deciding to do something about it. It has all of the tropes of Cinderella. It has yes, all of the go. romance and the love, but the key ingredient that's different is she's not just looking for a man to make her own life. She no. wants to make her own life. And uh, I think it's a really great film for young boys and girls to, yeah. to watch yes. when they're growing up. It's a necessary update, I feel mm. like, for the, for the values that we have now and the way that we want humanity to move forward. It's a necessary update and yeah. you are a necessary Cinderella.